tonight. Thank you for being here. And uh, if you would, let's uh, please uh, stand for the pledge and remain standing for a moment of silence tonight. Uh, Dr. Combs is going to lead us in prayer uh, tonight. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Let's all pray. Dear Lord, we thank you for this, another wonderful day that you've given to us for the opportunity we have to be here, uh, for the opportunity we have to make a difference in children's lives. Lord, we pray that you will um, help us to take that opportunity to heart and that we will try to make the best decisions that we possibly could and that we keep you in front and center whenever we're doing that, Lord. We pray that you'll uh, bless this evening's events. Um, and help us to do right in your sight, set the right example. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Do we have a motion to approve the agenda as presented? Motion by Mr. Jenkins, second by Ms. McClurkin. Those in favor, aye. 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 Those opposed, motion passed. Are there any additions? Well, right. Mr. Farrell uh, is saying we got have two additional field trips to be added, so we'll add those. They've all been checked off on Brighton High School, and they, yeah, they're good to go. And we'll add them into uh, the consent agenda. Would anyone like to remove any item from the consent agenda for discussion? If not, do we have a motion to approve? Motion by Mr. Davidson, second by. We have two seconds. <laughs> she got it. Miss Eubanks and Mr. McCann. Ladies first. Those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passed. Um, uh, superintendent update, Dr. Combs. Yes, sir. Uh, so mine's going to be pretty quick, y'all. Um, I'm going to be talking about our had a few things to talk to you about. I believe uh, Mr. Fields is going to share some things in his report um, that uh, will be of interest to you later on, and we can cover that in a little bit uh, about some events from uh, yesterday, kind of give you an update on that. Um, but if you'll look in your, almost said folder, if you'll look mm -hmm. on your device. You can still say that. Can I still say that? Device. Folder on your device? Okay, if you look on your folder on your device, up the top, it says Tennessee School District's 2022-23 Scheduled Salary Ranking. So this just came out, I just got this email yesterday, um, and TEA, uh, Tennessee Education Association, is the group that put this out, and basically this is rankings on teacher salaries across the state, okay? So uh, I thought it would be interesting to bring this up to you, there are a number of them on there, uh, but you know, you hear a lot of things as far as, you know, how do we compare across the state to uh, teacher salaries, that kind of thing. So this is an overall look right here. And if you'll look down there, I have highlighted number 40, Tipton County, 140, looks like 140 reporting. There are 147, so there were a few of them that did not report. However, uh, we're in the first column, which is always nice to know. Um, and as I was telling somebody just the other day, our uh, full average uh, salary is $57,425. Now, that is good. I love the fact that we're number 40. That's fantastic, right? Out of 140. But that does not mean that I want to stay at number 40. I mean, I, I think we can definitely, especially with this TISA funding, when we get more information and that comes out, which we have not had it yet, we were supposed to get some information. I don't know. Talk about what the problem is. Okay. Okay. So we don't have that yet. We're waiting to get that information. Um, they said we we're going to get some stuff in January, but we have not. So now we're waiting in February. As a matter of fact, we got some more information from TDOE that says we need you to fill in this survey to give us some more numbers to see where you are. You know, how many uh, free and reduced lunches do you have? All that kind of stuff. And so we're sending that back in again. So apparently they're still working through some kinks. But as soon as we know that, we'll know um, what we can do as far as adding to salary. Yes, sir. Did you say yes, I haven't looked at it in a while, but there was a, a chart that showed like the annual raise that the teachers get, and I was kind of comparing that to some other districts. Okay. How, how does that annual thing work? Because it looked like our teachers, it didn't build as fast right. in those first few years as some of the other, other districts did. Right. So there are, um, and I, I, don't, I probably haven't sent it to you yet, but I will send you. The rest of this report from TEA showed like minimum salary with a bachelor's, minimum with a master's. 
maximum with the vast with maximum with the max search. I mean, it has all that additional info on there. Yeah. So it depends on which one of those that you look at to see overall where we move. Yeah. Now, I will say that this body over the last five years, this is my yeah, that's right. This is my fifth year here. Um, you have done a bonus or a raise for our, for our employees every single year of that five years. Now it's been sporadic because, as you know, like even you know when they say at the state level, well, you know we're going to give you this amount for raises. Well, we have a hundred positions over the BEP, so um, it's not quite as easy as that to say we're going to give that. So it is a little sporadic, Matt. I mean, it, it just is as far as those numbers. Um, we're hoping that it's not so much so with this new funding formula, that it's done a little differently. I'm talking about the percent of raise that they get each year, like, because there's a chart that shows oh, after three years, about four the step. years, five years, you have the step. Yes, sir. That's okay. what I'm saying. The, the percentage, uh, and I can't remember what all di other districts I compared it to, but it was okay. just like, it seemed like it was a, a more gradual step versus some other, it was a quicker step. Okay. I guess is how you... The, theirs was or ours was? No, the, the others were. Okay. That they were, were like quicker. the first, maybe it was the first three years, first five years, you know, the way, okay. the way it, it staggered up. Right. It just well, seems, and it, it was like, uh, there was a gap initially, and then the gap right. just continued to, to get larger. So basically, so, so it looked like we weren't keeping pace with some right. of the others right. as far yeah. as that. I, I got you. Okay. Yeah. We will, we will look at that and we can report that at the next meeting. Yeah. That's, the, that, that's a good question. One of the things that I was going to put in here, if you'll remind me of that, let's let's look at that and see, so we can compare it to those surrounding. One of the things I put on mine, and you may want to write these numbers down, that I also want to share. So the latest report uh, from the comptroller, as far as per pupil funding, right? I'll keep that in mind. So when we look at when we look at this list and see that we're 40 on that list as far as um, full schedule average pay for teachers, our number as far as per pupil funding. According to the Comptroller's report, which is the last one on the site, which is from 2020, is uh, $8,644 actually in 27 cents. So that was there today. So that's where we are as far as per pupil funding. Now go all the way to the top of that list that I just gave you, Davidson County, there at the top, their per pupil funding is $12,374.33. Now let's look at another one. Um, Murfreesboro, $10,472.39. So you can see where I'm going with some of this, right? So if you get down here to uh, Collierville, number 15 on that list, you know, one of our neighbors, their per pupil funding is $10,073.96. So we are funded, number one, the state, uh, the state average per pupil funding is $9,753.74. So we're already about $1,100 under the state average yeah. as far as what we get for pupil funding. So when you figure that in and then see that we're still at number 40, that's still pretty decent. Yeah. Again, Madison, we don't want to stop there, but that's still decent. Yes, do you have Madison County handy there? Uh, I do. I think I did write that one down. Hold on a minute. Madison County, they're number 38. $9,835.33. We, we, like, we compare our, ourselves to them a lot. Yes, sir. <laughs> numbers, numbers are similar. Similar, yeah. And their per pupil funding is um, about $1,200 more, more per pupil than ours is. So keep in mind now, that's state and local match together. So, you know, you have like Murfreesboro. Like, consider that one. It's $10,472. Well, their local match is going to be big, too, because obviously... They have a huge tax base, yeah. right, with all the stuff going on there. So their local match is going to help them jump and get up there a little bit higher. Um, so those are the things that we need to consider whenever we look at those. However, the step increase part is still something that we need to look at, and that's something that this group to look, can look at to see when we make that move, you know, if we're able to do those raises with this TISA funding, let's see if we can improve that a little bit. And there yes, was sir. some talk about in the next... What, what is this, 23, the next four years, 2027, mm -hmm. that money or something was being put aside, legislature, for um, base salary for teachers at 41, jumping to 50,000 base. Yes, sir. So that was in the governor's state of the state, yeah. right? He talked about over the course of his, uh, this next four-year term he's doing, that he wants to see the minimum 
uh, go up to 50 grand per. So I'm thinking he's also talking that that would be part of that TISA funding, that that would help with that, but it would be over the course of the next number of years. So our ours, I think our minimum is, is it 43 right now? 43 something? Mm -hmm. Is it higher than that? It's it's around there, so it'd be a it'd be a pretty good jump for us if that's what they decide to do. I think teachers are gonna make a lot of money anyway. Yeah. I do too. I mean, I you know I'll I'll, I'll say I think well. I think I'll, I'll make hundred thousand a year. I think I'll make hundred thousand dollars a year and then do away with tenure because you won't need it because they'll stay. The good mm -hmm. ones will keep on teaching, and the other ones that decide ah this isn't for me, they'll go find something else. So, um, but yeah, I I I love it. Across the board, quite frankly, I think every teacher everywhere ought to make a lot of money. 43,285, uh, no experience. 43,285, zero years bachelor's. Zero. Yeah. Wow. yeah. So if he raises that to 50, that'll be a pretty good, good bump. We'll see what that does. But it's over the course of four years, so we'll see. But hopefully we can you know, start building that up ourselves a little bit with this funding, hopefully. So anyway, I just thought that was an interesting report. I can get you... Any other numbers you need as far as, you know, the per pupil funding for all these other ones to kind of give you an idea, um, I can show you that as well. Um, but, you know, a couple of those especially I wanted to give you because those are surrounding. Uh, here's one. Shelby County, number 17, their average is 62000 but uh, their per pupil funding is $11,167.61. Wow. And they're right next door to us. So that's who we're competing with as far as, you know, teachers – going in, in that direction, you know, they can go there and make on average, uh, what would that be, about another $3,000 on average if, if they go to Shelby County, if they'd want to make that drive, but, you know, <coughs> what is I'd really stay here. What Sir? is Billington's per pupil? I, I don't think I looked that one up, but I can, uh, so I can find out pretty quick. So there are neighbors and they're about there, 50, ranked 51. Yes, yeah. sir, they're ranked 51, but I, I know their per pupil funding is more than ours is. I know it is. I want to say it's about $1,000 more because I, I did it like a couple of years ago to compare. Yeah. And so I know theirs is more. And so, you know, you look at theirs, their, their per pupil funding is $1,000 more than ours, um, but our average is higher than theirs. So that's good. Well, our, our local portion is probably one of the lower ones of the, in the state, though. <coughs> probably. Probably. $10,595. Probably, but you know the thing is too, we don't have the same tax base. Right. Yeah. You know, so it makes sense, yeah. and we don't have the same tax base that <coughs> the county and Murphy sure. and all of them. So, yeah, we're we're, we're grateful for what we get. So, yeah, absolutely. Anybody have any questions about this? I told you I was going to make it short and sweet. I just thought, again, this is hot off the press. I just got it yesterday, so I thought we'd stick it in there in your files so you can take a look at it. So, any questions for me before I yield the floor? Have y'all met with the uh, substitute teacher vendors yet? Um, Miss Lisa is supposed to be getting me a report about that, but uh, she has connected with her. Okay. We're going to find out some information. Yes, well, I meant the uh, you were going to the subs. I mean the uh, substitute teacher, the person there. The yeah, number. but I was talking. Weren't you? Didn't you say last meeting you were going to be meeting with vendors in the near future? Like services. Yes, but she was going to meet. We haven't done that yet. Oh. She was going to meet with. I their see. HR person that gotcha. you connected us with right. as far as finding out how they're doing okay. it in-house first, mm -hmm. and then we're going to set that up. Okay. Yes, sir. Gotcha. Yes, sir. But I think that you have been working on a, a bid for that. Yeah. It's yeah. in the paper today. It's in the paper today. It runs two weeks? Okay. We're, gonna, we're accepting bids until February the 28th. Do you have an update from yesterday, or is Mr. Gilbert going to cover that? He's going to cover that. Yes, sir. Anybody else? Mr. Hartman, it's time. Yeah. All right. You're up. Thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you, Dr. Cole. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'll be short and sweet as well. Um, whenever the sun shines and it gets warmer and it's kids in the school, we'll have PowerPoints and all that pretty stuff in the future. Rooftop units aren't really much to look at. But we have at Mumford Elementary installed 35 of the 44 that they'll be getting. Um, Mumford, Mumford um, Ag, we've done eight of the eight that's there, coding um, High Botech 12 of the 12, Charger Academy, we've installed the two that we've been replacing there, and Drummond's Elementary, um, we have replaced 40, I mean 27 of the 41. We had, Hugh, what that means as far as the overall project, that's 84, <clears throat> 84 of the 266 units that will be replaced. So we still have another 182 still to replace, but still keep in mind, I know that sounds like big numbers, 
but that's about 30% of it that's in the system. In our newest school, and whenever people refer to, you know, TOCA, those units are still considered outdated as far as the industry is concerned today. So I say that just to prepare you in the future for us to continue to need to replace units in order. And again, we'll have Marford Elementary and Drummond's that we'll have great comparisons of how we're really saving, you know, with the newer units because those will have the new roofs, the new units. Um, Drummond's Elementary, we're actually looking to um, bring their energy control system back live to where we can control it. So that one should give us a true um, data as far as what we really can expect out of an older building from an um, energy standpoint. Uh, the Mumford High, we, we just recently begun. They're, the units that are outstanding at the other schools are simply because they were going to need a crane to set those. These others were able to sit for low. So that's the reason some of these schools aren't completed yet because the schools require a crane. Mumford High, <clears throat> we, re, we have started Mumford High. Um, and that one will sit as many as we can with the low. We're trying to defer the crane to whenever probably will be the first one uh, summer break to finish some of that just so we don't disrupt the class and have to move the crane as minimal a few times as possible. So the Covington the Covington High softball field is actually going to get put, put in the paper next this coming week to for the for bid announcement. We're looking to open the bid on the March the 9th. So what the reason the delay there is we'll run it in the paper, meet the requirement there, we're gonna have a pre-bid, a pre-con meeting. Um, with vendors that are interested in, in bidding, and then from there we would um, open bids on the ninth. Mumford High, uh, they're they're looking to again still relocate their their field um, beyond the middle school on that property. Um, they're looking to have theirs in a phase process because you guys have um, applied, have awarded two hundred fifty thousand dollars for their project, and that won't complete their project. So they've got. We're looking forward to hearing their financial plan on how they will bring that to completion. So, the Home Ec Kitchen projects, they have begun the order, to ordering the uh, equipment for that one. That's an ESSER funded project also. So we're looking for those to, that equipment to get ordered be in our possession and we're hopeful that that's gonna be a this summer project. So then those kitchens will be renovated to be more of your commercial style, um, industri you know, for your industrial kitchens. So that's, we're, they're very excited about that one. The fence at Brighton High School that's protecting the track. If you guys ride by, you'll notice it's it's the um, it's right up next to the edge of the new rubber track, so it's the black new fence. Um, so check it out. It's nice. It's it was a nice feature to protect that asset. And the Covington and Mumford, we um, Jeff does plan to have that put out for bid. He's got the specs for me to put out for bid this coming uh, week, and so. Uh, <coughs> We're looking to hopefully have that lined up so as soon as the road, the coding and high track coding gets put in, we follow it up with the with the tracks for the, and the fences for those as well. Um, the Agmorns, I still encourage you to get back up to Mumford High if you haven't. I mean, they, that's a pretty nice building, very nice. I mean, Johnson has done a great job with it. And the um, Mumford and and Brighton greenhouses have both been delivered. Um, some dirt work's got to take place on that as well as the installer that will obviously be from out of town will be inside, you know, be to install those. those are, that's going to be pretty exciting for sure. I wasn't here to report with you guys on the um, freeze from I was out of town that week, that last one. So um, we're planning to wrap up the polishing of the floors where we had to remove all of the tile from that project. So that's going to be us this coming summer. And our goal is to polish the uh, concrete like you would have seen at Brighton High School whenever they had their flood in 2020. 20. 2020, that mm -hmm. flood. So we're going to put, where, where, where tiles popped up, we're not going back to tile, we're going back with, with polishing the concrete and staining it. Um, the final color has yet to be, to be decided on. I'm sure it'll be probably some shade of gray, if I had to guess. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's a token. A token, maybe brown, depending on what it matches. I, I will say this: one of the cool things about you know, I just honestly wish we had done this a long time ago, and that is that you know the money that you use for like custodial services, and you remember, Mr. Vincent, when you're in the classroom, Mr. Isaiah, y'all remember this? You strip every summer, all the furniture comes out of that classroom. Yeah. Teachers have to empty all that stuff. All that stuff comes out. They strip and wax the floors. And then you wait for a while, and then they put it all back in there. Half the time, they put it back in there too soon, so the things stick to the floor, and then you pop a tile up. I mean, just the whole thing. 
But with these new, the concrete floors, I mean, you just stain them and buff them. You're never stripping wax again. You put a wet mop on them and yeah. buff it if you need to to make it look nice and you never move stuff around again. I mean, it looks nice, it's efficient. Um, that's where we're going. Yeah, it's great. <laughs> and the schools that will allow. Yeah. Of course, the older blue tile schools, that's a different animal as far as the, uh, the product that holds that one. But hopefully we're not gonna be fighting too many more floods. I mean, we're looking to do some um, pre, uh, whenever, whenever the temperatures drop in the 20s, we're looking to do some things to help prevent that. So, um, not to jump on, um, Dr. on Coach Fields' uh, FARS report for some, about yesterday, but we are in the process, like I told you before, replacing the exterior doors. So that one is, those doors have been ordered. Mumford, Jeff, is working on that again. These are, ESSER, these are um, grant ESSER funded project as well. They've been able to cooperate the front there for these security purposes, if you will. With that, it's going to give us a restart on many decades of master keys that may or may not be as completely secure as what they should have over time. So, what I'm going to pass out to you just for you guys to review. Sorry, I don't have it on your nice little tablet. But, uh, <laughs> Come on. What, what it is, you simply, what, what we're going to do is to, um, to manage the keys as they are requested, we know keys are going to get lost, keys are going to break. Um, but we will have keys that are going to be documented. So uh, the doors that we don't replace, the doors that we don't replace, we will, um, we're going to put blanks or have them re-keyed and of course key fobs will use them. But you'll see the, the, it's not just going to be, hey, I need to get a master key cut. You know, because they're out there floating around. But this will be the ones that this will be the process. The administrator requests the keys, and um, <clears throat> whomever's in my department maintenance, who Mr. D. May will be the gentleman that cuts our keys for us. And then the court, they're going to come with a stamp that says "Do not duplicate." Hopefully, the vendors will reach out to the local vendors and say, "Hey, you know, you see one of these keys? You know, I, I would like to say we could get a logo on them, and then we could." Um, Secure the buildings a lot more than what they are. I feel like from a maintenance or from a key standpoint right now. What's the cost effectiveness instead of having you do a proxy card on some of the members to, to control it? You know. Well, I would say it's much more efficient as far as the safety. I mean, you can yeah. deactivate those immediately. Yeah. Um, I can't tell you that I know what the how much the key fobs. Cost be, we'd have to have Glenn do that report probably right. on that. Well, what was they, that. they do have self service. Key, key machines, you know what I mean? You can make your own keys. <laughs> I, don't know. Yeah. I don't know how to say that's something else yeah. to consider. I mean, I don't know if maybe we you know, get something with a chip or something that, that throws the machine off. So, or the logo, like, point. you know, if we can get keys like blanks printed that are very specific where someone would have to, they'd have to find our, I mean, there's no, there's no foolproof. Sure. We're just trying to make it as difficult as possible. And just hold them accountable for, you know, they don't just call up and say, hey, I need to get five master keys for we got cameras too, right? The cameras yeah. with the Absolutely. Yeah. We do. We do. How many, how many doors is it? Like oh, total? Man. I don't know that. Don't know. Yeah. I mean, we want okay, you mean you're looking for one main door to go into each building? Or? No, I mean, we'll have we'll have key entrances around. Oh, okay. But like I said, there's a quad unit. You're going to only have one, right. maybe two key entrances as that quad unit. You know, those yeah. will just have blanks on yeah. But I personally, <laughs> key five is it tracks the people. I personally like that too. Yeah. Our biggest complaint of the day when I went and stapled in, we couldn't get into a lot of rooms because the master keys and stuff didn't work. Right. D tried, it was his key. Yeah. The principal tried master key. Janitor tried, it was like, oh, we just yeah. get there. You know? yeah. Yeah. But it's a big effort and it's, yeah. it's being taken very serious to secure the schools. Yeah. And remember when we replace doors, we're talking about door frames and everything. I mean, the whole thing, because the mm -hmm. foundations, especially on some of those older buildings, have settled. Mm -hmm. And it's, I mean, there is no amount of fixing that door or that bar to get it to shut right. You got to replace the whole thing. Mm -hmm. And so that's what's, you know, costing some money. But when they're talking replace about it. replacing doors and safety, like, are, are you talking about like Mumford High School, for instance, when I went up there the other day to get my little gift or whatever they gave? Um, you go through the front door and you're in the school. Like there's no secondary, there, there's a, a a frame there where there's no doors. Are Correct. we looking to get a analysis of that to see how we can secure those better? Glenn is, Glenn is actually, sorry, Glenn Turner, I keep acting like everybody knows his first name. Most of you do, I think. Um, Glenn is looking into that with okay. some of that safety to put 
some of those um, breezeways, so to speak, in our buildings that don't have them, because right. some of them have them. Like, you know, Brighton Elementary, you know, you could basically be, you know, locked down in the corridor there, right? right. And then uh, the newer ones, Atoka and Austin P, when they were designed, you know, you basically go in and you're locked into that front lobby and you have to be let into the rest of the building. Those are the newer ones. So yeah, we're looking at some kind of a some kind of a corridor where yeah. once you're in, you stay right there. Yeah, like you can't um, get back out the way you came in. Correct. Until you're released. Correct. Yeah. That's right. That's right. Yep. Okay. Any other yep. questions for Mr. Mr. Horner? Thank you, Mr. Horner. Thank I you have guys. a quick question. Yes, okay. <laughs> Follow up. I'm sorry. On Mumford football yes, field, has that done? On the lights. Uh -huh. so I'm assuming lights. that's what you're uh -huh. referring to. Yeah. It's not complete. But the money has been. It, it, it it's has just a matter of them doing it. Yes, mm -hmm. Okay. For, it's going to be 16 additional lights. Okay. Yeah. Someone asked me about it, and I was like, I know, I know. It'll be done by football time. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> well, I hope. Yeah. Well, thank you, Mr. Hunter. You're welcome. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Bird, Director of Instruction. Thank you. Um, I'll start tonight with our. My device will be right with our teacher of the month. We have uh, this month we have Crystal Billings, who is a sixth grade ELA teacher from Brighton Middle School. She's unfortunately couldn't be here tonight, but I'm still going to read uh, all the nice things that her principal said about her. Uh, Miss Billings has been dedicated to Brighton Middle School students for 23 years. She's very meticulous and punctual in all she does. She inspires students to learn, holds students accountable, and sets high expectations. Very organized and disciplined, good ethical principles, works well with her colleagues, self-reflects and always willing to improve and adapt, and she is very reliable in all, aspe in all aspects of her job. So uh, since she wasn't able to be here tonight, um, I will take her award for her tomorrow at school. We certainly want to say congratulations and thank Ms. Billings for all that she does. As you can see on the board, uh, these are our 13 school level teachers of the year, and this will be our new billboard that will be going up on Highway 51 in the coming weeks. It depends on the weather. It has to get dry enough where uh, the area around it, the truck can get down to put it up, but hopefully soon uh, this billboard will be going up to recognize our um, school level teachers of the year this year. We're very proud of them. And we have narrowed it down. Uh, we have three district level teachers of the year. And in your shared folder, hopefully you saw an invitation to the March 8th principals meeting. And we're going to honor uh, those three district level teachers of the year. We have in grades pre-K through four, Ms. Kelly Looney from Austin P. Uh, grades five through eight is Jessica Pickett from Munford Middle School. And nine through 12 is Stephanie Bruce from Munford High School. And that meeting again will be March the 8th at nine o'clock and we will be at Brighton Middle. So we would um, love to have you all to come. We do that first, and then when the, once the teachers leave, then we have the regular principals meeting. But again, happy to have you all, and I'll try to send out an email reminder to remind you uh, of that event. Also in your shared folder tonight, I've placed an agenda for the February 24th uh, board retreat that is scheduled to be at the EMS building in Brighton from 8 to 4 again on Friday, February the 24th. We are excited about that. We're going to work on our strategic plan revisions in the morning. And then that afternoon, we're going to have a student panel for you to talk with, a teacher panel. And then we've invited Mark Herbison with HTL Advantage to come and speak about uh, <coughs> flu, Oval City, am I saying that correctly? Um, and how that is will and is affecting Tipton County. So we're excited about that. If anybody has any questions, of course, uh, just reach out and let me know. And then the last thing, I, I mentioned it, but I'll say it uh, as part of my report, the RFP for substitute services for next year has been put out to bid. Um, it was posted today on the website and in the Covington Leader, and we'll take those bids through February, the or proposals through February the 28th, and then begin the selection process at that point. And I, I think that's what you were asking right. about earlier, yes. So toward the end of the month, we'll know who responds, I guess, and go from there. That's all I have unless somebody has a question. The, uh, <clears throat> the math textbook thing that was a couple weeks ago, I wasn't able to attend, but uh, can you tell us a little bit about how that went as far as um, who presented? And so all of the vendors that are on the state approved list presented to the committees. Um, and so some, some vendors have textbooks, very few had textbooks at all three levels. Some were just elementary, some were just middle, some were just high, and some were a combination. Uh, but everyone that was on the approved list um, they were all invited to, to present to the committee. And so now the committees are back in their schools. They're working, 
going through the samples, looking at the online, um, I guess, pieces of what's available online, and then um, the decision will come down March the 15th, and then it will come to you all. <coughs> and then what's the, the decision? Explain how that works as far as the, the March decision. So on, on March 15th, the committees will all get together. And they'll work in grade bands. We'll have the elementary together, the middle and the high here, and then out in the annex. And uh, they will deliberate, I guess, if you will. And um, the committee will make a decision by grade band of what the, they will make a recommendation. recommendation yep. And that recommendation goes to superintendent. And then, again, in April, it will come to you for a vote. And then how much input do the teachers get? On. Well, they just are the, the committee. committee. Okay. So, all right. So the teachers in the classroom, the teachers at the schools, they they have the samples and they're looking for them. They have rubrics that they look at, and they of course look at the standards to see which one they feel like work would work best for them. And then they um, they give their I guess input and their rubrics um, to the committee members, and then the committee members bring that in turn to the meeting on March the fifteenth. So when, so when's the next meeting for that? March 15th. All right, and that's when the dis recommendation will be made. That is the meeting. So nothing from two weeks ago, all right. Until March 15th, So you have the Correct. presentation, but now the decision, okay. Correct, and so what, what we at the district did, uh, we gave the schools a day uh, to pull teachers. We provided subs, let me say it that way, uh, for them to work together and dig in more deeply, not for every teacher, but for a few teachers so that we can't, obviously can't do that, um, for them to look at it. But, but they, um, they've had the samples for a while, so they've been looking at them. They're meeting, they have school level teams and then we have the district team that meets with us and the other supervisors. Uh, so we will not have another district meeting until March the 15th. Okay. Just, let me just say quickly, I, I did go to that. It was excellent. Uh, I went to the part of the school, heard the presentations, talked to a lot of teachers. Everybody was very engaged, very serious about it. Three people that I talked to were having the most fun, I think, and I had the most fun talking to them, were the parent representatives. They said, man, this is great. We're really learning a lot. Already talking about, well, we like this one, but not that one. So it was very well organized, very, very well run. So thank you for that. Appreciate that. Uh, Dr. Bird was in charge of that. And, I you know, as we said, could you? <laughs> as we said, we were going to revamp it. You know, even we even recorded them this year. So they're all video recorded so we can go back and look at them if we need to and say, no, we didn't pick that one. Well, yeah, you did. Or, you no, you didn't. Right. That's right. The committee meeting. So, um, but yeah, she did a great job organizing mm -hmm. it. And, but thank you. Mm -hmm. yeah. Any other questions? Thank you, Dr. Bird. Director of Operations, Mr. James Fields. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. I'm sure you all heard about the uh, message we received yesterday regarding CES, that there was an armed party or possibly an active uh, shooter in the building. I was, personally, I was overly impressed with the, with the county, both the county and the city police departments. Now, I wasn't in there, but what I heard as soon as they got there, got in the building, that they went down to a room to organize or to strategize the things that to make sure everybody was following protocol. The response time was remarkable. I was about 15 minutes out when I got the call. And when I got there, there was two armed, I guess it was ARs or whatever at the, at the front door, 12 or 13 police around the building. And I'm sure they had already swept the building, four or five cops searching the parking lot. So when I pulled up, and I just parked in front of the building, you know, hey, I'm somebody, I gotta get here. Chief Turner said, uh, she said, she said, who are you? Move that car, you know, you gotta get out of the way. So I went to the car and called Dr. Combs and said, can, can I come in? <laughs> but man, they, 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 was running it now. they, they did an excellent job. One of the things I determined when we were going through the uh, supervisor uh, of the year stuff is the main concern of parents the, trend, the trending pattern is safety, even above academics. You know, they're concerned whenever they're, they drop their child off or they get off the bus, are they gonna make it back home? Now, it was intimidating, it was, it was scary, um, but man, they, they did an excellent job. I would also like to commend the faculty and staff at, at CES. Uh, the story I got, there was like 13 kids in line 
and the cafeteria workers, whenever they went on went to lockdown, the cafeteria workers pulled those kids in that class that were in line to the storage to the storage area and locked the doors and and just kept them there during the whole duration. So uh, the reports I have, we followed all protocol, the lockdown, nobody in the hall, nobody moving. I'm not saying we did everything perfectly, but according to both uh, police departments and the school systems, we did what, uh, what we were supposed to do. So, this is just to show you how, how far out it goes. So, um, you know, I had everybody planned. Of course, Dr. Bird is our communications person, so she was here on site. Uh, Mr. Fields was at Crestview Middle, and I was inside Crestview Elementary, right? So, we're in there, and the phone, the, the secretary says, Dr. Combs, you have a call. And I said, I don't have time for a call. <laughs> We're right in the middle of this thing. It was the commissioner of education. Penny Schwinn yeah. called and said, hey, we heard something's going on there. What's going on? I mean, so it was it was like that. You know, it, the word gets out that something's yeah. going on. Um, but I'm telling you, the sheriff's department, yeah. Covington PD, Homeland Security was there, TBI, I'm telling you. I put our law enforcement up against anybody. They were they, they were amazing. They were so good. Yes. Last night at, last night at uh, my church, um, a gentleman approached me. His wife is a teacher there, and uh, when the code went out, everybody was anxious. Mm -hmm. uh, or, you know what's going on? But he said um, I was to I was so impressed with Dr. Combs and his staff that whether you did or didn't, the email that went out to the teachers let them know what it was. She she texted them and said that email, knowing that they were there, they were aware and everything, that email calmed my spirit. And she's like, I, that made me say everything's gonna be okay. So just so you know, the communication that you did meant a lot to those teachers that went out. And plus the, uh, the, the, the phone call that went out to the students and parents and stuff, I got it too. Okay. That was well received. Thank you. So, Thank you. There's always that, and you know, it's all you, know, you learn as you go. There's always that that balance of you're in the situation, trying to manage the situation, but you're also trying to get the information out for folks to know what's going on. But you know, precedent is you make sure you're taking care of what's going on in that building first, and then you make sure you get it out as quickly as you can. So um, it's just everybody on the team was really good about it. Of course, you know, Chief Turner is. Man, she's a communicator. Yeah. I mean, she was, you know, she was, we were syncing up phones and, you know, and hey, what, what are we doing? You know, so she was, she was really good. But um, yeah, the faculty and staff, the kids were, the kids were yeah. awesome. I mean, they were, they were That's awesome. I was wondering that. It was like, impressive. Yeah. We gotta get you a badge, though. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> you I think we just need Chief Turner there. <laughs> Chief Turner to keep on. <laughs> Mr. Hey, what, did, what did the initial call come into? Came into Lauderdale yeah. Dispatch. Came into Lauderdale Dispatch, and then Lauderdale 911 Dispatch called Covington PD and said, "We have this call. Like I've got a, I've got a photo on my on my phone of where they have uh, narrowed. They know where it pinged, wow. and there's a there's an area where that ping came from. Um, you know, kids are using like they're using apps and stuff now. You can download an app, and it'll bounce that signal all over the place. This is the third one, I guess. We had one last year, yeah. one at the beginning of the year, and then this one. And um, one of them was... This is the third this year. Uh, yeah, we had the person in custody. That person was in custody within 24 hours. Mm -hmm. So the apps the apps don't work. Mm -hmm. This is being reported. The apps don't work. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, you know, they think that it doesn't. They're going to get caught, and then you may have more to say about that, mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Fields. But, yeah. yeah, the apps don't work. But Mr. Davidson, the, the call did come from the north sub. Is that the area you live in right? over there? I think so. Mr. Isaiah, what, what, what were you doing? doing? What were you doing? <laughs> <laughs> it's all yeah. quiet. Uh, it I, did. I, I do believe they traced the, the phone was disconnected. But even mm. if the phone is disconnected, you can make a 911 call. Right. So I don't even think they caught up with the person yet. So. Mm -hmm. But they will. The only other thing I have is, if you can remember last last month we talked about, and I've spoken with Dr. Combs about uh, raising the out of district fee from seven fifty to to one thousand. I'm not going to go over that again, but I did tell you the numbers: Carryville forty two hundred, Bartlett forty one hundred, Germantown forty nine hundred, and Tipton County is seven fifty. Uh, and I I believe we offer as good a product as as those other school districts. And um, 
I was afraid to go any higher than 25%. You know, I'm, I'm thinking if we go 100% increase, that we're going to lose some of the out-of-district people that we have now. So I just think a gradual increase uh, would be appropriate. It's, it's not in the policy. The fee is not in the policy, but Mr. Marty, I would like to uh, make a motion that y'all accept the, uh, this increase from 750 to to 1000 for the 23 okay. 24 year. We have a motion on the floor. Do we uh, have any, uh, uh, Mr. Jenkins uh, makes the motion. Do we have a second? I think that. Mr. McClurkin, second. All right, questions. I think that amount is in a policy, actually. Yeah. I, I remember reading it, it says, says $750 per hour. That's not in the it, procedure? Huh? We have a procedure on manual, too. You sure it's no, I'm pretty sure it's, it's in the policy. I'm okay. pretty sure. But uh, yeah. Is it? I, I agree with that. I'm ready. I'll vote. Are you ready? Just, it, are it, go ahead, Mr. Is this something we need have to de decide now, or can we think about it another month before we get this far? Um, I mean, it's probably okay to think about it, but the sooner we get it, because that, that information is going out to parents pretty quick that are all, because we already have folks asking about next year. Oh, yeah. So, I mean, the sooner we can let them know, probably the better, but, you know, that's up to the group. No, yeah. Are there any other questions? Those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passed. Any other questions for me? Thank you, Mr. Mr. Man, I think I have an answer to your question that we talked about last month on transportation. So I'll give you that. Mr. Billy Daugherty, financial report, please. Yes, sir. You already have a snoop full of him, don't you? <laughs> so we, he said he's already put in this time tonight. <laughs> we had an hour with him earlier that it was all good. We just hope this will be good, right? That's right. I appreciate it. Uh, so, before you, uh, board members, you have a blue book, and it is the uh, published copy of the Internal School Funds Audit for fiscal year ending June 30th, 2022. That audit, as you know, uh, is conducted by Whitehorn, Tangersley, and Davis PLLC. There's two books there. One is the financial statement audits, and one is the governance. Governance being used specifically, and that's confidential information specific to your management. So. Uh, not to be publicly disseminated, but the financial statements there if you want to review that audit. And the results of that audit will be published in the next comptroller's results. Uh, next, I would like to take up uh, some 141 general purpose school fund amendments um, <coughs> as published by TDOE and ePlan on February the 9th of 2023 and requested by the program managers on the following grant, which is the voluntary <coughs> pre-K. So if you look in your 141 folder, uh, you're going to see uh, a colored sheet there. And I'm trying to get mine to open, so bear with me. So the first sheet you should see inside of that folder under 141, uh, under the project information, says voluntary pre-K. Uh, as you in, as is indicated on the state's uh, paperwork, this is the third revision. Those are the new numbers uh, for BPK. And the next document you'll see on page three begins the 141 Excel document that is published to the county commission for the requests. So as we scroll through the budget real quick, if you'll go all the way down uh, in the budget to page uh, Eight of nine, it's under the 73400, 73400 early childhood education. That is, that is the VPK budget, and those are the amendments being requested uh, or the adjustments for uh, the voluntary pre K grant. So, Mr. Chairman, um, I would like to ask that a motion be made to allow us to uh, amend the 141 general purpose school fund. As it relates to the 73400 and volunteer pre K budget. Okay, we've heard the request. Do we have a motion? Motion by Mr. McCann, second by Mr. Kirk. Are there any questions? Those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passed. We'll stay there in uh, the 141. So uh, it has been agreed upon uh, by the county mayor, the county budget director, Dr. Combs, to move the $150,000 debt service fund contribution, which is located in your general fund budget there and the 141 820 620 So that, that account again is the 82330. 
uh, and we're asking to move that $150,000 to the SRO funding, which is located in the 72130 account. Uh, these funds will be paid to the county or Tipton County government, and they're being used by the sheriff's office to fund each of the SROs at Austin P. Elementary and Drummond Elementary. So, Mr. Chairman, I request that uh, that amendment be approved, please. Do we have a motion for the request? Motion by Mr. McClurkin, second by Mr. Jenkins. Are there any questions? <coughs> Those in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passed. All right, uh, if you'll go back and click on your one federal, 142 school federal projects fund uh, folder, please. And your first page should open up to a grant that says Project Summer Review ARP Homeless 2.0. It's a blue and white paper. Let me know when I'm free to proceed, Mr. Chairman. Okay. All right. So uh, I'm requesting tonight for uh, approval from this board to make amendments to the 142 School Federal Project Fund uh, published by TDOE and ePlan on February the 9th or as of February 9th, 2023, and requested by the program managers <clears throat> on the following grants. I'm going to call out their names. They are the ARP Homeless 2.0, ESSER 2.0, ESSER 3.0, the ELC or Epidemiology and Laboratory Capacity Grant, the CTE Perkins Reserve Secondary Application, the CTE Perkins Reserve Regional Career Pathways Application, and the HQIM Literacy Implementation Network Participant Literacy Network Grant. These are all the documents contained within there. As you will scroll from the top uh, of that page on that blue and white paper, if you'll continue, you'll see those grants in the order I just read them from, showing you all the documents, um, justifications, reimbursements, and allocations uh, as it's listed in TDOE's e-plan for our funding. And at the bottom side of that, actually, we'll have to go out into another document. So once you review those, uh, you'll go back to your uh, finance drive, and you'll click on the link that says 142 School Federal Projects Fund SFPF, and that is the actual Excel document published to the county commission that reflects the amendments uh, in these funding applications uh, with the amendments. So, Mr. Chairman, uh, I would like to ask for a motion to approve the uh, school federal project fund amendments as presented uh, by TDOE and E plan on February the 9th for the grants that we previously mentioned. Okay, do we have a motion? Motion by Ms. Eubanks, second by Mr. Farrell. Are there any questions? <coughs> All those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passed. All right, and back in uh, your uh, other folder with your blue and white paper, you'll see uh, the um, Access for All Learning Network grant. So the district has recently been named the recipient of a $50,000 Access for All Learning Network grant known as the AALM grant. Uh, it is a part of the IDEA uh, discretionary grant series for special populations and these funds are to be used to pay for the excess, excess cost of providing special education and related services to the children with disabilities. Uh, I'm requesting tonight, Mr. Chairman, that a motion be made to allow us to uh, accept this grant and amend our budget, uh, increasing our revenues by $50,000 for the purpose of this grant and to uh, spread it out across the expense line items associated with the grant uh, as it is printed and published by TDO and ePlan as of February the 9th, 2023. Do we have a motion? Motion by Mr. Jenkins, second by Ms. McCart and, and Mr. Kirk. <laughs> those, in, those in favor, aye. aye. Motion passed. Uh, if you'll go back to your shared folder and click on the Central Cafeteria Fund, um, the 143 Central Cafeteria Fund. As you know, in our previous meeting, you all approved some uh, USDA monies, so I want to bring to your attention that we have been recently notified that our district has received uh, word from the state that we are being awarded the round two of round three. So we got round one last year, round two now one more to go, of the USDA Supply Chain Assistance Fund grant. And this is in the amount of $284,822.73. $284, the purpose of these grants, as we've discussed before, is to, in response to supply chain disruptions, revised menu plans as a result of that, those items that are difficult to procure, and the price fluctuations in the uh, food. 
So I'm requesting tonight, Mr. Chairman, that uh, approval be granted for an amendment to be made to the 143 Central Cafeteria Fund to uh, increase the revenue by this uh, amount of $284,000 and be dispersed in the expense line items as reflected in that Excel document. So moved. Have a motion by Mr. Farrell, second by Mr. Mr. Davidson. Are there any questions? All those in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passed. Uh, as previously mentioned, Mr. Chairman, uh, no other action need to be taken but the Excel documents which reflect all the amendment requests and the format requested by the count, uh, County Commission are included in your documents. And these amendments will be presented to the Finance Committee and the uh, County Commission at their March meetings. All right. Mr. Chairman, that concludes my report. Let's there be questions. Any questions? Mr. Jenkins. Can we stand on the... Uh we talked about the uh, copier contract. Uh, so the copier contract was once again uh, presented to the finance committee this past Monday night. Well, let me back up. Dr. Combs and I was in a were in a conversation uh, with the local director of local government finance with the comptroller's office and the local government audit uh, director Bailey and uh, Chairman Fee of the finance committee. Uh, there were some questions proposed by Chairman Fee, which so we carried it back to the comptroller. They ruled basically on the statute that Dr. Combs is the one that is uh, authorized to enter into these contracts after approval of, of this board. And we have to carry that before them, not because it's a debt issue. The comptroller ruled this is not a debt issue, uh, but we do have to start booking it as a liability. And so with all of that said, we had a previously scheduled meeting with uh, the copier contract company next Tuesday, Dr. Combs does, to review that contract that you all have previously approved and to sign that. And so once that's signed, uh, we review it and sign it, then copier contract begins. But that's where we are currently. And the county commission votes on uh, the motion to approve or to give Dr. Combs the authorization to enter the county into the contract. On the Twentieth, yeah, on the twentieth. On the twentieth, right. so they moved their meeting, uh, unbeknownst to us, from the thirteenth to the twentieth. Right. So we'll be able to give them a copy of that prior. And I'm going to tell you, I didn't get a chance to tell you yet. You were instructed. Yes. Um, I got a call from Mr. Hunt, the okay. company up just before the meeting, Perfect. and he's bringing a contract to us tomorrow. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. What about the safes for the SROs? So that, I know uh, Mr. Turner, now this is, that's outside my wheelhouse at the moment, but I do know Mr. Turner uh, got a purchase order to run an ad in the paper for this Thursday, so that is being... Is this Mr. Turner? Though? I know. This, <laughs> <laughs> it needs to come I know you're spending the money outside. Yeah, so, uh, but he, he got a purchase order to uh, put an advertisement, so this week's paper has, has an uh, advertisement for those. Yeah, now it's, it's not called safe, safe but it's yeah. called it's proper language, and is it going to run in this week's paper? I believe as well as next Thursday or the Thursday after that. It's running two times, and, and so as soon as those bids are submitted, then we'll open them and present them. And Hunter, you met with Mr. Turner and I the other day about those safes, right? Because Hunter's Hunter's crew, okay, twenty-four. Hunter's crew will be installing those yeah. those gun safes in the building. Yep. I got a question on this copier contract. This sounds different. Have we had to do this before? This way? I thought usually once we give you the authority at the end of that contract, that was the end of the issue. This was the finance. word from the finance committee first said something of they, well, it's kind of confusing. However, let, let me just say this. The comptroller has advised us to get y'all's approval, then the finance committee's approval to authorize me to be able to sign it and do it. One of the things that's a little different is instead of having the contract, uh, the contracts at each individual school, we're doing one big contract with them at the district level, which just is more efficient. We have the whole thing right here, one place. Um, and so, yes, sir. Yes, the same company. It's one big thing instead of several. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And I think they, you know, wanted to make sure it wasn't going to be a debt issue for the county. Um, and so, we touch base with the comptroller, and it looks like all that's going to be. The reason yeah. this board has to vote on it and he has to sign it statutorily is because if should one of the schools say default for some reason, they still expect their money and you all have got to say you're willing to pay it if they don't. Right. And then the county has to fund us through tax dollars so they have fund, they have to authorize him to sign it. Are the copiers though that are going into the schools, are they all the same? Because I'm, I know that each school has different needs. and So each school has identified where their copiers are okay. going and what they need. So you have some that are simple units that just right. make copies. You have some that have the correlators and staplers or whatever, depending on what they're used for. And so we didn't get involved in that. The building level leadership made those decisions. Right. 
all we all our involvement is is to make sure that it's done pursuant to statute that he signs uh, the contract obligating the county to the 1.7 million over 60 months and uh, that's really our involvement gotcha. and you'll have some color some will fax some won't it's that's all right. Based on what the schools need. Was it, did we not vote on that a couple months ago? Given John, you did. Yes, yes, we did. That's <laughs> yes, sir, you did. But we took yeah. that to the. We had appeared before the county commission. It was first uh, opined that uh, they did not have to approve it, and then a question we had were set to. Dr. Combs had an appointment to meet with Mr. Hunt, and a question was raised uh, by the chairman of the finance committee about some things. So we had to put it on hold and reach back out to the comptroller. And for an opinion, and the comptroller rendered the opinion, which we all presented to you in those facts to begin with. Right. And now we're back on track to do what we had planned to do. And so we hope by, I think it's the 15th, I so. that the contract is signed because right. Mr. Hunts is anxious to get this equipment in the schools. The teachers are anxious to get it, and we're anxious to get it behind us get for it, 60 it months anyway. Right. Now, and I'll say this you know, the, the, the good part of this is going through the process we have the comptroller's ruling on it so yeah. it just it covers everybody the county us everybody so we know what we're supposed to do the other thing is it's such a huge order you know every time we do this we have so many schools and so many options it's going to take mr hunt's company a little bit to get it all out and they'll have to stagger the delivery because okay. obviously they can't take it out of one big huge so they're going to stagger that delivery so honestly the sooner it starts we'll have all new machines the sooner it starts they'll start working it out there and like Truckloads, I guess. And they're doing that with building level leadership. We're not even right. getting involved in that. As soon as they're there, right. they make the decision. And to answer your question, to be quiet, get what changed to GASB 87. So if you have difficulty sleeping tonight, go home and Google GASB 87. It's the new financial standard on county leases. And it says things have to be booked a certain way. We have to book it now as a liability. Much like if you said hire a uh, supervisor, pay him 100 grand a year for the next five years, you're going to pay him $500,000. Yeah, so and the plan is whenever I sign it, well. whenever I sign off on it next week, I'm going to spell my name B E N K I R K. Yes. And then when I sign off on that, the liability purposes. Are you, you good with that? I'm good. I'm going to sign G L E N K I R K. Who knows where it is? He's not here, so he's going to get it. Point taken. Mr. Chairman, that's all the business I have to find out. That's all. Hey, thank you, Mr. Daugherty. Thank you, sir. Dr. Cole, do you have anything else? Um, no, sir. I didn't want to give a shout out to uh, Jared in the back. What's up, Jared? Jared, uh, Jared's sitting in. Jared's sitting in for us. Um, uh, Kevin had a, a medical issue he needed to take care of, so uh, Jared stepped in for us. So thanks, Jared. Appreciate it, man. This will be uh, up on the website. I guess we'll get the link. It'll be up on the website. Yes, sir. Thank you. That's all I have. If there's not anything else, do it. Uh, does anyone have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Motion by Mr. Davis and second by Mr. Farrell. We stand adjourned.